welcome back. This is the Epic Land Stream for Valorant, powered by Intel. My name is Wintario, or you can call me Summer, and I am joined by Rick on the mic today. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm uh, now awake a little bit more after having a bit of a rough night. But, <laughs> I mean, we had some great games to kick things off, and I'm excited to have some ourselves. Yeah, definitely. It was, well, every time it's going to be a late night at a LAN event, but it is going to be a whale of a time. We have two games so far today, I think we're casting. Yes. But the first game is going to be Cognizant versus John Howard. Yeah, definitely one I'm really interested for. Uh, this is Seed 4 versus Seed 6, John Howard being Seed 4 and Cognizant being Seed 6. Uh, one that I'm really interested in, uh, John Howard are a team who've been together a long, mm. long time. So uh, they've got a good core, they've got good coordination, but sometimes they can get overpowered. And if we're talking about power, I mean, Cognizant have it uh, in spades. In particular, Pate, a player who came over from the Netherlands. Uh, last time I saw him, really exciting to watch, and I'm looking for more of that again. Yeah, definitely. We're talking about, well, the imports per se for the side of Cognizant. But when we're talking about John Howard, like you said, they've been together yonks, years now, months. And... One thing that I've noticed from watching the games, casting before being at past Epic Lands it, or even Insomnia's is their util usage is amazing. And when you're coming down to it, these are Radiant players. They are mm -hmm. immor high Immortal 3 players. That's for certain. They're going to have that gun skill to back it up. Mm -hmm. But one thing to look out for in particular is how they're playing together as a team. Since they have been together for so long, they're going to have, well, really deep regimented strats possibly. Yeah. But the util usage, especially on that team, it's going to be sublime to watch. Yeah, it, it, it's a big strong point in theirs, and I think they're going to have to leverage it here against Cognizant, who are a little bit of a younger squad. They're not quite as, uh, as boomer <laughs> uh, yeah. as John Howard. Uh, as you said, been around literally since, I think, before Valorant, the main four of that team. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Cognizant are going to be able to put up against them. And I think it's really interesting to see as a benchmark. John Howard are often a team who kind of sit there and go, OK, we're good. We do our stuff very well. We've got our weird strats sometimes. Mm. And other teams really have to show that they are better than them, that they can perform. And I think Cognizant are a team who really desperately want to prove that. Yeah, I really want to see from the side of Cognizant is the proactiveness against a team yes. like John Howard. Like, we know the executes are going to come down absolutely flawless, util usage, everything's going to be timed, maybe even putting up, well, regimented stuff that they've had yeah. over these years. They've had multiple lands together. And what I really want to see is this proactive play, especially if they're on the defense. You can't just sit and wait on site for a team like John Howard just to come on, full exec you. And they are quite a slow team mm -hmm. when it comes to the attack. They're very regimented. Like It's going to be a word that we're going to be saying a lot on this cast is they are doing their fundamentals absolutely perfect. But it really does come down to these late minute decisions. I think that is lacking from t John Howard from the games I've seen previously. Yeah, it can sometimes be a problem for them. Uh, and I think if you've got teams who want to really emphasize their own play style, mm. it can be a real problem for them. I think on the maps that we're having, though, sorry, the map apologies <laughs> that we're having, uh, Haven, that can be really interesting, uh, especially since if you're the one to dictate the pace on Haven, I feel like you have such an advantage. Yeah, and absolutely. I, I think John Howard might struggle to kind of control this, considering it's going to be attack for Cognizant first, which could be a deal breaker. It could be a deal breaker, but also it's three maps. This is one of the biggest maps in the map pool currently. Similar to Lotus, it's going to be played with this multiple fakes, taking yeah. certain pressures first, like we've seen on Lotus, you take a main. But Haven, it's a little bit more up for grabs. Mid is definitely going to be a focal point for any of these attackers, but defense, I really want to see anything proactive coming from them, like we said. And it is only time will tell when we see them come in. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing kind of how those strats focused around the mid, as you yeah. said, and kind of using that to just kind of spread out and attack the other sites. I think that's something that John Howard, you're talking about how regimented they are. That's yeah, definitely absolutely. something we're going to see from them. See a lot of the setups on the sites. I think I'm interested as well to see what people pick in terms of uh, the agents. Um, in particular, I'm looking at do they pick up something like the Cypher, which I actually I'm yeah. really, really excited for on Haven, uh, and what they pick up in terms of initiators as well. I think Sova's still fantastic. There's a lot you can do with that. But also, I think the KO is still so fantastic. When we're talking about a map like Haven, you're going to be expecting realistically two of these initiators. Yeah. So especially when we're coming down to it, personally for me, my, my dream comp for this, one that I run in my own team, will be you'll either have an interchangeable duelist with this jet or raise, and then you'll have the interchangeable Sova or um, Fade. But then you tend to run, like you said, like this flashes comp. You need that. You need the um, rechargeable util for the information. I put Breach on there, maybe a Killjoy, especially with the um, changes now. Yeah. There's nothing to destroy that um, Ultima. So the retake possibility, along with the site clearance that you can get, is going to be insane. Unless they have the 
these double shock dart lineups yeah. and a KO Molly or something like that to yeah. do it. That's again something that we could see coming from John Howard for the this change of util style that they're going to be doing, which after the changes, I want to see how they're going to adapt since they are, like you said, Regiment's team, they might not be as young in their ways to change up their comms, especially with the new changes, the nerfs, and then maybe even a duelist, like a neon coming in for these fast paced attacks. Well, I'm a sucker for some neon. But I am too. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just hoping we see one at least this epic line. I really hope so, especially when I was last here. Got to see some really great Neon on Breeze. Uh, obviously, we're not going to have that one here. But it's interesting to see whether you can teach an old dog new tricks yep. in the form of a John Howard and whether they're going to be able to really deliver uh, on this map with those changes coming on. And I think the Breach is a really great one to highlight mm. because he brings so much in this map. And he was slept on for quite a while. I mean, he wasn't in the best state. That's part of why. <laughs> yeah. um, and you had, play, you had agents like Sky who were just so dominating in the way Absolutely. they took over things. But I think he really has come back into his own. And I mean, Rolling Thunder is such a powerful ultimate as well for on both sides and you don't necessarily always get that from mm. some of these agents you're like oh this is great in this specific scenario but i feel like rolling thunder is always so fantastic that's when you when you were mentioning stuff like cypher yes it's coming back into the meta there's more versatility in regards to map positionings and like the killjoy you're you're quite tethered to a certain position on the map depending on where you want your util but with the cypher you have that freedom but when we're talking about the utility on top of that we have the cypher ultimate it's it's yeah. not as relatable and versatile as you can say the Killjoy Lockdown, which, yeah. again, like we said, it's so good for space making, especially on the retakes with the new changes. You cannot destroy it simply by shock to, like a double shock die. You need a combination of two agents util to take care of it. And if they're expending so much to get onto the site in the first place, are they going to have that enough to stop the retakes or in that kind of similar situations? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. So I, I think I'd be shocked to see teams not taking the Killjoy uh, and, and importantly shocked to see if they don't have something prepared for it. If they don't, yeah. I think they're really going to struggle. Um, I, I do think we might see something a little weird. We might actually get the Neon. John yeah. Howard are known to play something strange. Um, and I, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what they play on Haven, but they definitely do something a little bit strange. I think I remember them focusing around a Phoenix at one point, uh, running obviously kind of like just getting the run it back up as much as you can yeah. using that to entry. But that's not really the, the style of the time. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit old hat. Uh, but they might still run it. It might be something along those lines as well, kind of pumping into those ultimates like we were talking about before uh, mm. with the Rolling Thunder, with the, um, with the uh, Killjoy. There's a lot of ways you can kind of use ultimate economy to your favor uh, on this map because of all the angst, because of all the opportunities to kind of just completely take over a site with just one piece. So I, I think that's something to focus on. And also, we went, we were, sorry, apologies. We were talking about um, the B site, obviously mm. mid. I think that's going to be an interesting position because you can't use, for example, the Killjoy Lockdown to really interact with that. The Rolling Thunder can work, but then you kind of find yourself in a position where that post spawn is not so great. Yeah, I think B site is definitely something that we're going to see teams go for possibly on rushes. It is quite easy to manipulate the space to get on this since it's normally the site that's kind of left a little bit alone yeah. really, especially t in this um, mid to late round, you tend to stack more towards C garage or towards retake on A. And B tends to be a little bit of a loophole or a little bit of a gap in some of these teams' defenses. So it'd be really interesting to see if they do go for any of these fast plans, fast XX towards that site. But like you said, the most important thing isn't getting on the site, it's being able to hold the site once you've planted, which B site is a little bit exposed. I think it's, a, it's yeah. a good way to say you've got the flank from A, flank from C, you can walk out a garage, you have two entries, well, three entries if you think about it, it depends on where the plant spot is going. And it really is just going to be how well these teams are able to take that space on B. If they do go for it, you can't just sit on the site, you can't play for that spam down bottom mid, you really have to be proactive, which again, we're going to be saying this a lot, I want proactiveness, I want these teams to be walking out get in the space, hold in the space, and just even if they give up a certain amount of space towards maybe C long, make sure you take that proactively. Okay, we're given space, let's take it back on A. Mm. You really, it needs to be this push and pull within these teams. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And kind of, you were talking about holding some of that space. Mm. I think we were talking about the Sentinels and in particular the yes. Killjoy, even on attack, has a lot of use to be able to shut down some of those angles, make sure you don't get flanked, and especially if they're pushing onto sites like B, that's going to be very important in how they utilize that. So, uh, obviously, with the meta as it is, we're going to see a lot of focus on those Sentinel players, but I think even more so on this map, on both sides, which is not necessarily always the option, I think this and, oh, sorry, on Haven and Lotus, it's definitely something you've really got to be on your game. Yeah, and like I said, I'm so glad Lotus has become into the game. It's a nice th three map. It really does play out similar to Haven. Yeah. In regards to, you can't really just 
go for one site. You really, it's really quite a long game when you come into these like three site maps. There's so much space on the map, but so much space on the map. Let's get into the map itself. We are going to be starting off our game of Haven, John Howard versus Cognizant. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get a quick look at some of these agents already that harbor hovered. That could certainly be interesting. And the Yoru as well. Oh I was my. saying that we were going to see something a little bit special, and that's absolutely it. I don't think either of these teams are running anything that I would have expected. We have a Brimstone on Haven. Okay, yeah. that's a little bit unexpected, Jet. Sure, fine. Yoru! Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with that one. <laughs> Kill Joint, fine. Sky, a little bit of an off meta pick. We were talking about how well it can be used. We have it on both sides now instead of opting for that breach. Yep. But I'm really worried about John Howard having... Well, Sky is your only initiate. You haven't got any sort of reveal. You have the save route for the side of Cognizant, which is a little bit better for info gathering, which... I'm really concerned, honestly. Yeah, it's a bit weird, as well as the fact that there's no Killjoy on uh, the side of Cognizant. They I think this has been. Yeah, they have a chamber instead. That's yeah. been, something else that's very strange. And a um, harbor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I but don't I'm think either of these comms are like <laughs> nice in the way of expected or what we think a team like John Howard, that we've we mentioned, are quite regimented with their util, have kind of surprised us, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. DM God has always been an avid Sky player, so it's not yeah. the most surprising thing in the world. It is a little bit surprising that we're seeing it here on this map. I still thought it would have been the breach. I still think the breach is a little yeah. bit better, and it really can set up well for, for a lot of pushes. But if you're good on the Sky, it's comfort over power, I think. Yeah, absolutely. What's more important than being able to shoot back is being able to shoot back on an agent you are more yeah. comfortable with. But we are going to be getting into this first round. A lot towards Z, and that's it. They're already going to be putting some pressure on... Yeah, indeed. Oh, walks forward. Peggy tries to get aggressive, but Walty delivers two quick frags, and it will keep it up. Tricks looking for a chance to poke on in here, get an opportunity, and take some of these players out. It is two versus two, but that health bar is very low. As Walty gets tagged up a little bit themselves, he's starting to beat a retreat here with that spike. Yeah, they're going to be leaving this site. Obviously, not wanting to challenge it too much, especially with half the ut uh, rechargeable util not going to be there. But look at this. The fake away has fooled the side of John Howard. And now they're going to be able to, well, re-hit C with quite ease if they do end up going for this. Waiting for the rechargeable Utah now. The Sky Flash is back up for that information. If they were to flash back side, it's not really going to reveal much. No, but it is going to show that no one else is there, I guess, especially with this uh, dart as well. They're going to absolutely know 100% for sure this is going down. And I'd say it's a breeze, but unfortunately, that's the wrong map. <laughs> um, and yeah, they're going to have soon control of the seaside. Now it's down to a pushback on in. And you look at the util that's available for John Howard. Mm. It's not exactly great for retakes. I'm going to be honest with you. They do not have a lot to work with. But with some low health players, they could still absolutely win this out on the gunfights. They've got access to one smoke right now from the brimstone but look at Walty waiting in the wings uses that turret as well that's going to tag them up but soldier takes down BM magic and it's just four HP for Trix here who taps on the spike baits them forward <laughs> look at that turret it's doing massive one gets one oh. almost gets the other but soldier delivers I was about to say the plant spot then especially when you know there's no room back site you're planting in quite a revealing yeah. position because you know that they're not anywhere near you especially after that reveal and the flash they are going to be coming CT or long, realistically, since your position is locked in in garage. With that plan spot, you kind of told them everything bit of information on your position, and they have to be garage. Like with that plan spot, you're not going to be playing CT, you're not going to be playing backside. But either way, down to the low health, it is a lovely shot from the Soviet in garage to, well, really steal the deal for that round for them. Yeah, Soldier steps up and uh, managed to deliver for the team. Yeah, it would have been, been likely that it should have been something a little bit more open, but instead they're going to open up with a push to get control of some of these orbs and some of this uh, control on the A site. You know that push and pull you were talking about? Look mm. at that pressure coming up through mid already. They've got oh a player gosh. ready and waiting in the chamber, but they haven't managed to spot out anything just yet. Three players already in, already on that A site. Could make things interesting, but with Pate going down, Cognizant on the back foot here. Yeah, and that flash is going to... They have all the information of both players there. The Sova drone coming through now as well, and it is going to be a bit of a brawl in window. Flash is getting traded back and forth. But who's waiting for him? Walty there. Getting the dink off, but not connecting the final shot. 
Yeah, good shot there from Zeref to finish off DM God and does bring it back to even, but a lot of resources invested to try and take back control of an area that was originally mm. theirs for Cognizant here. So this execute might be a little bit difficult. I think that's why they're potentially looking at this, but the aggression from Carmen Walty was just so big there. Gets a couple of frags and now John Howard, they really are on the back foot. They felt like they had control. They'd invested a lot out of Cognizant. That could have been their chance, but instead they've squandered left. it a little. And now it's two versus four on the retake here. A little bit of spray down. Spike goes down, tries for the flank. There's tree ups, but it's not enough. And the numbers just keep going down. Peggy gets a good flash, but unfortunately hits themselves as well. Yeah, it is the classic right click in another in another round. Possibly <laughs> could have got, come away with a clutch there. We all know it is a free gun, but it's well, it's one of those, isn't it? But when we're talking about it, it was really nice to see the proactiveness. Like you said, I'm really looking for from the side of John Howard. They were able to take into that window on an eco round, fetching yeah. one for themselves as well, which is realistically you want to maybe getting one or two there, but especially getting that first blood, getting that gun off the board. But well played to the side of Cognizant. They were able to. Well, pull it back, make sure they were secure in the second round with a thereby. But going into this now, it does seem that they're favoring the side of C a lot more to the start of the rounds when they really pressured anything quite well towards A or towards mid, yeah. especially towards the start of the rounds. Yeah, I think they need to maybe back off a little bit or commit harder. They need to yeah. be a little bit more decisive on that. They got caught off guard, but, you know, when you're fragging oh like that, gosh. it really doesn't matter how far down you are. Obviously, rifle advantage right now for John Howard, and they are leveraging it. DM God living up to their name, and, well, Pate manages to get a frag here, getting some damage back, but John Howard looking like they're likely going to lock this one out with no utility left and only a sheriff of 45 HP. Pate might, you know, be toast. Um, toast, well, patty on toast possibly is what we're going to end up at the end of this round. But when we're talking about it, it's really nice to see that they have come towards this um, mid-aggression. Hopefully it's not going to be merely on this bonus round, on the lesser buys, and hopefully translating this into their rifle round. But the space that they were man able to get, and there we go, BM Magic, um, being able to hold Garage and see long with his teammates securing the spike in mid. Very nicely played by John Howard. Yeah, really well done. Uh, they got those early frags and they closed out from it. I think the thing is, right, John Howard, they don't always find their leads. They sometimes have some of these, not cheesy, but, you know, interesting strats that yeah. can get them an advantage early. If they get those, then they're really good at locking it out. But sometimes getting those initial frags, they don't have some of the power, the in individual power that some other teams have. Mm. Um, and that can be a real problem for them to get started. So once they do, once they get the ball rolling, it's all fine and dandy. But up until that point, it's a little bit more difficult. This is a very key round, obviously. We always say it, that fourth yeah. round, rifle versus rifle. Let's see how it goes. Especially since they were able to take that damage from the round previous, like with Spectres yes. and Sheriffs. It is looking into a little bit more favorable for the side of Cognizant if they're able to really take advantage of, well, any sort of pressure they can give. Like, look at them now. They're getting into that mid. Um, they're not really pressuring anything else. There's no sort of direct pressure anyway. It's more of, oh, you can hear some sh people shooting outside B. We can hear a sky dog, go dog and garage now. And it's nothing really, they're not taking too much space. They've quite left um, A long now with the players pushing up and it's gonna turn out into a little bit of a brawl. Yeah, I think they kind of have to take this slightly slower because they need to make the Killjoy use their nano swarms and such the like. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that they're doing this. They're not committing too hard to anything. But you need to be able to look at a lot of this utility getting invested and see how it goes. Two players waiting round here. Luke JM activates that dash, is ready for it. Wants to be in that position. Dashes over to the other side. Position completely known. The Euro flashed out. So they actually know that there's two players there. Luke gets tagged up. So they've got that information even more. Soldier finishes. And then, well, he actually managed to find Afra. Make that two. Looking for a third here. Position known, but it does not matter. Able to go use that ultimate and make it out. Dimensional drift to another dimension. And uh, B Magic even picks up one as well there. And that's one by one. They go into the crosshair of that Yaru. And we were talking about how regimented the teams can be. We are talking about how well we can see um, Side of and adapt. But no bother adapting if you're going to pick one by one. We really need to see a little bit more teamwork there. And of course, they had the information that they were to there. We had that flash from the Yoru. We had the um, Yoru clone as well. Great util from the side of the Saber getting the kill yep. onto the jet in that corner, really isolating the play there. But I think we'll show you in the replay now as well. But it's, it's quite interesting. Lovely shots, but it's a bit, yeah. bit lackluster. 
It is a little bit. It's unfortunate as well. And we were talking yeah. earlier about John Howard kind of being the bar. If you want to be a top team, you need to be able to beat John Howard consistently. And you need to not make fundamental mistakes like that, not peak the same person three times, just one by dribbling one. in yeah. um, and... and find yourself losing a round, which really should have been theirs with the advantage they got, mm. with the fact that they could really set a pace, get onto that A side, or move away. They had so many options available to them, and they managed to choose the worst one. Yeah, they committed to the fight, but the commitment to the fight was one by one by one, and look at that. The isolation, that 1v1 went onto Walty there, but traded out by Cam. That's going to be a rifle picked up for them now, and the sight given. Yeah, that's big. Luke is in the back here, looking for a chance to maybe stand up and give some pressure. Oh, dashes forward. DM God continues to deliver. And it's just so easy for John Howard there. Good damage, though, from Cognizant. Absolutely. Because they only had those sheriffs. Only sheriffs? And you were still able to pick up three and yeah. a plan. Wait, did they plan? No. Uh, no, they didn't No, plan. they no. didn't plan. But they were still able to get the site, which kind of leads into what we're expecting in the next few rounds when they do have these rifles when once they do get that first pick onto um b magic when they play in that site which usually you do see the smoker playing all alone towards c if you are able to isolate him get him off his feet see him in the next round then you have that site to yourself and really i want to see a good po uh, post plant coming in from the side of cognizant because we, we haven't really seen any sort of post plant. it really has been down to these brawls that they've just kept peeking into i suppose but on both sides yeah, it's been a little bit funky, uh, unfortunately. Both teams kind of just taking control and then kind of going. I think we saw it right at the start that there was something, but it wasn't really much. And Luke Lovely. continues to die again and hasn't been able to have, have the impact so far on this defensive side. But with Calm just pushing on for DM God, however, continues to deliver and steps up to the plate. John Howard right now looking good with DM God just fragging out. Absolutely, and I was about to say, this is looking so good for Cognizant. They've been able yeah. to get these two early picks. It is a three versus five, and then, like that, DM God has, well, I think he hear us cast and was like, oh yeah, it's really going good for Cognizant. Yeah, no, sorry, it's in my hands now. I'm going to deal with it, and deal with it, he did get those three picks there. Again, seemingly one by one. It does seem that it's kind of going both ways now at the moment, giving these um, angels out to these players. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that they kind of find themselves in these positions. Zeref had also invested that ultimate. Cognizant really looked like they were getting a uh, round up. Calm yeah. had opened up so much, absolutely, as you said. But they instead ended up wasting a lot. And you could see those frags there, but it all came down to DM God in that situation. Got so darn much out of it. They held it down. And another 4K, I think. I think that's a second 4K in this uh, this game already. Currently 11 and 4. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty impressive scoreline to be at. Only six rounds in. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the kind of fragging power you need on yep. these sort of teams. Like we said, if you want to become in one of the top teams at these events, whether it's in the Beacon Circuit, whether it's at LAN, whether it's at Insomnia, John Howard, like you said, they're kind of like the bar. They've been around for ages and they're not really one of the lower teams. They are up there and sometimes they are going to get beaten out by these, well, regimented teams in the sense of we've had Le Petit Buffon's last yeah. epic who came out on top along with um, teams like Gigahub Gaming from last epic as well and it's kind of like they all were at the standard of John Howard and what we need from the teams wanting to go further wanting to progress in the sense of the beacon circuit in the well lifeline of Valorant at the moment with the T3 to T1 system yeah. that they, we've now had integrated it's going to be interesting to see how these teams are going well newer teams are going to face up against well john howard which is our bar is, is what we test teams against are they beating john howard are they not that kind of thing yeah i think it's absolutely true um and, and i was talking about a bar and i was really expecting someone to really meet that bar and yeah. it was Pate, and they've not been able to have that impact so far on the offense on this chamber that's a little bit sad for me to see hopefully they'll be able to pop off uh, and i was i'm certainly expecting them to do so whether it's now or later in the tournament but i yeah. think it's a big focus right now cognizant need a couple more people to step up in these rounds be a little bit more consistent because it feels like these frags are kind of coming in you know a couple of opportunities but then not leading to much more Ooh, and look at that, the Brimstone and the um, Sky Ultimate and the Harbour Ultimate actually invested. And look at that, we're going to be going into a garage split. Are they away of the magic in this corner? Oh, Pate, like you said, he is going to be the one to look out for for this team. Getting that entry pick there. Are they going to be able to make it out onto site? They opt not to here, and I think it's a good choice. They decide to back off, play slow. They've still got 50 seconds. You yep. were talking 
uh, at length about how, you know, people can need to be able to play that macro game, but with Zeref getting picked, that's not exactly where they want to be. So now that's going to be only one controller. I guess it's not too bad for Cognizant, but with Pate getting taken out by DM God like that, and they're just walking right into the open arms. Calm does deliver two, which does give them a chance in this round, but it was looking a little bit squeaky, unfortunately, there for this team. They will be able to get the spike down, but you can see already Peggy waiting to pounce, looking for a chance to move on in. They're just waiting for that harbor wall to drop, and then it's their chance yeah, to shine. Look at this, both John Howard players are separated, but look at that, Cam being able to isolate that one, well, 1v2 essentially for Triox there, and the bomb planted from there. Peggy, it's all down to you. The Hunter's Fury invested as well. It is looking bleak for the side of John Howard in this round. Is it going to be another round for Cognizant on this board? Whoa, that was so nice. Almost found the second. And now you've got to see him move on forward. The dart doesn't hit. Beautiful it's missing. unfortunate, but Soldier Fine. still makes it. It's fine, the usual missed. It was, it was only a ruse. It was only a ruse, okay? It was, it was to lull them into a false sense of security. We, yeah, I missed my usual. You, you, it's fine. Like, I'm walking up on you, it's fine. Just try and stick out, I'll get you while you're diffusing. But a really nice shots from Cam. It really does feel like the rounds that we're seeing Cognizant with the best sort of capabilities when they're getting that first pick, especially when it was Pat again, that one there, not going then venturing out into the seaside, resetting, getting that um, space onto B, but then. It really is the isolation of the players that they can get from John Howard being able to, like DM, DM God that we've seen, play, picking off play. the players well, as they're unaware, really, of the side of Cognizant going onto the B site. Yes, yeah, there's been a lot of people getting caught off guard by corners, which, yeah. you know, is sort of haven, but also need to see these players do a little bit more. Peggy just holds down the yeah. fort, however. Yeah, that's yeah. so, so good for John Howard. Again, I was highlighting when John Howard get ahead, they are ahead. It's so hard yeah. to pull away from them. Calm, as you said, has been able to do that, but unfortunately, I mean, Calm's already dead, so that's not really going to be able to have already that impact. Off the yeah. And that is that both your smokers, your omen and your harbor off the board for this round, so it really is going to come down to, well, really need to get these picks because it doesn't seem that we've been getting too many one for zero trades. We we want, for the side of Cognizant at least, you want to get that pick and get out. Yep. Or being able to, not necessarily even get out, just pause, just freeze for a little bit, assess what you've done, try and lull um, John Howard into this false sense of security. Okay, we've left a gap here, but Peggy is definitely feeling secure on that C site. Picking up a third for himself in that round. Yeah, I, I, just been able to hold it down and honestly this is a big part of what has made this so brutal so i think a big thing about haven especially when you're on the attack is the great thing about being on attack is attack is you get to decide how the fights happen yeah now I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Cognizant have not been the ones to decide how the fight happens. It feels like every single time it's John Howard taking the initiative. And I said that sometimes this can be a problem for them, but when it isn't, I mean, you can see this team, uh, you know, absolutely marching through. Yeah, absolutely. They're looking so confident, which yeah. is something that you're worried about if a team like John Howard is going to be taking these aggressive. They're coming at you with such confidence and it's only going to build, especially after the rounds that we've just seen now, yep. the last few, especially when we come into these rifle your rifle rounds, especially this late in the half, it's it's dwindling prospects for this half for the side of Cognizant. Of course, there's still rounds left, there's still a chance to make some change, and it is a change towards the A site that we've seen the pressure given in. Comes up, go on site. Yeah, has managed to make it on site, and we know that Calm can deliver. Has got a lot for their team. We'll be able to clear out a lot of that utility. Those Nano Swarms both gone, but Luke is already stepping up. Unfortunately, stepped up a little bit too much there. DM does manage to get those frags, but doesn't convert into a multi kill as usual. I think it's an important thing here. And it is three versus three using the dimensional drift in order to get an advantage here, setting up for their team as they push on in. Now knows where one of those players on oh in. Peggy's no. behind, gets that first. They now know where they are. But the spray, no, the shots from the sheriff come out on top. It seems like right Right now, Cognizant are their Huckleberry. John Howard really needs to make it happen, nice. but the flash did not land as they want to, and that highlight player, Calm, delivering Calm. again. Exactly. It does seem that we need, well, Calm to come out with these three, four Ks, just even to have a little chance in the round. But Peggy, that ultimate then, oh, the shroud, it just, oh, it was so unfortunate for the side of um, Soldier on um, Cognizant. He, he was only trying to drain for his team, love him, and then, well, Aww. assassinated from behind. But it was really nice to see the positioning of Triox actually in that round. It was in short, they didn't clear anything towards short that round. They left it towards so late in the round where Pate was then ultimately um, killed by Triox, which was the information that they gathered from it. Great uh, reaction from the side of Cognizant to be able to get that pick and then focus the um, attention to DM God coming in from the CT. But lovely shots, lovely Sheriff shots that round. 
Yeah, I think it's really nice and co uh, cognizant as well to find that more eco round and actually mm. manage to take something away from John Howard. Now, that might allow them to build a little bit of momentum, finish off this half strong, find themselves at, let's say, like 7-5. That would, that would be a nice position yeah, to definitely. find themselves going into the defensive half. Um, but it's, uh, it's problematic. The thing I was kind of highlighting when we came on into this is uh, I really wanted Cognizant to come out swinging, to come out strong, yeah. to take that advantage early and not let go. Unfortunately, I think they've given John Howard a lot of space to get into the swing of things. And John Howard are also really good at understanding their opponents getting those advantages early like we see there um, when they understand how people are going to approach things. And that, well, the read from Luke then, well, the Jet player venturing out into mid, getting the first pick for himself, ensuring his first bloods are at least there for this map. <laughs> but when we're talking about it, like you said, we really need to hit, see them hit the ground running. And this is such an important round because this has reset the, ult, um, the, reset the economy, basically. John yep. Howard have lost... Um, the last round, so they are down to like, the last couple of thousand creds, and then Sally Cockers, and they've lost they lost bonus now. So, this is really where they need to highlight what they can do with these rifles and to make sure they can, well, kind of put John Howard's economy in the mud a little bit and maybe force them in e into an eco, eco round next and make sure they can build up the rest of the economy, even if it's for just for the last couple of rounds of this half. Yeah, it has been a bit tit for tat, so the economy can't be amazing for either yeah. team, honestly, at this point. So it could easily lead to three rounds on the trot, whichever way this goes. This is so important, like you said. And Cognizant already a player down is, well, naturally not really where they wanted to be. Um, but <laughs> they can still pick it up. They've still got ways, uh, and they have the ability to choose where these fights happen. But Luke in at that corner, manages to take one down and almost kills Calm as well. This is so big for them. They're going to play on the retake. They already take down another player and Cognizant are falling apart at the seams here. It's not looking good. The time is ticking on through. Soldier wants to burst through, does find one, takes down that, but can't even go for the plant here. Knows that there's a player nearby. Sure, they the finish off the, the M God. Players. And the health is low. They're going to get interrupted <gasps> here. No! Calm delivers and they get that spike down, but the Killjoy drops that lockdown. But they're aware. They're aware of the position of this kills right now because of that ultimate That's true. you have that ping on the map and look at the plan spot it is lovely planted for their positioning now that they've taken down into mid they can get the spams through but the kills right turret it could prove a fierce enemy for these two players now when they're trying to stop this well retake from trio which she's technically already got the site it's going to go into these first yep Shots. This could be so hard when this gets the spray, but doesn't nice. convert over in Lovely Soldier. Lovely trades. Yeah. I mean, that was just so well done there. Cognizant as well. I really thought they were going to lose the round. Things looked so dire, but so Khan dire. stepped up, delivered, found that frag, that, like you highlighted. And that was so, so big. Gave them an opportunity. You guys just saw it on your screen. And, and Triax was kind of in a situation where, yeah, you could drop the ultimate, but who cares? What does it do? You yeah. don't have a way to lock down that line of sight. You don't have a way to deal with all the utility that's going to be coming your way, especially with a Sova sitting there. That's going to be a real problem. And well, Triax fell for exactly that reason. Soldier, uh, Soldier in that round did it astronomically well as well with yeah. the shots, being able to protect the bomb as well take the space into a link as well oh, but the, the aggression towards see long we have the blade storm and a flash coming in from the yoru and that is it the only place now they can be is towards a because of how much space and pressure that they've given yeah they're gonna actually manage to force players off from john howard but john howard are happy they're happy to play slow they don't have that lockdown importantly they didn't actually waste it in the previous round and mm. it'll be pretty pretty good here but losing b magic that's actually very nice because now there's a lot of angles which can't be locked off in the same way peggy's gonna set up for their surprise play um, and with luke jm hitting these shots like they were before hopefully they can find a way on into the site but already taking down good crossfire soldier delivers backs off tries to get the spray and it's traded two for two in the end but that's a low health player in terms of that omen cognizant they know they have to play forward they know they have to play aggressive calm they're sticking Once the ball get it, they are sticking it they got half gets the shot peggy delivers but does not no does no but still whiffs and zeref finds the frag so big for cognizant i thought they were going to drop that round for sure Sure, it wasn't looking very confident towards the end, was it? But it is still a round one for Cognizant. The um, Shrouder step coming in from Zeref as well was really astronomical yeah. into round. Being able to get Triox away from the main pack entry, re entering the site, um, as you can see just before in that replay, he was a bit far away from his teammates because, well, he was sent to deal with Zeref and yep. Zeref quite literally held down the shots on him and his remaining teammate to close out that round, which 
it's kind of like where we're wanting. We're wanting a 7-5 yep. out of this team. It is an attacker-sided map, of course, with three sites. It's going to be a little bit favoring you yep. there when you have so much versatility of where you want to go. But it does seem like Ooh. C is where they're wanting to go, and B Magic is going to be going into the arms of Cam in that smoke. Yeah, not like ships in the night, unfortunately, for no. the harbor here. Uh, gets completely caught unawares, and that's a really nice frag to find as well. Takes one of those controls off. There is still a little bit more to work with, but that Hunter's Fury doing very little. Finally tags up two players there. Yeah. Surprised they got a double up for that one. And uh, John Howard... I mean, they're going to be fine with this. They're a player up regardless. They've still got control of the site. Those sm sky smokes are going on in. It's a slow burn game. And keep oh. an eye on this because Luke JM, I was, you know, smack talked him earlier saying he wasn't delivering, but steps up to the plate. But with Walty and Yang stepping forward, it's up to Peggy to really hold this, to delay, to give them what they need. That dart doesn't manage to hit. Peggy goes for a reload, but no one's pushing on in. They know as well they have to be worried about that backstab coming in from Luke JM, who's now just playing on their fears, happy to play slow. The timer is on there side but also you're having to worry about these players in garage you have two people mm -hmm. holding this cross you have one towards backside c and then you have luke jm holding their flank yep. there's no well they left. boxed in quite literally and they're gonna have to win this with their angels yeah good smoke coming on in here means they can cross it but look at that peggy was in the perfect position and those angels i mean look it looked fine because they got the smokes down but they still didn't expect peggy to be back there they had the no. information so a bit of a misstep there uh from john howard and cognizant i mean they move up uh, sorry, I'm um, sorry, and John Howard moves yeah. up to meet them at 6-6. Six, six. Apologies, got a little bit confused there, but uh, I mean, there's no confusion about it. Peggy, really big in that round. Yeah, absolutely, and being able to hold on to that position backside has allowed for those two teammates to sit in garage, waiting for that rechargeable smoke from the side of um, Cognizant from the Omen, and they had that flash in their hand ready to pop out as soon as any sort of utilities put on the site, and then you have that uh, crunch then from Peggy in the backside, not needing even to take contact, because you have those two players flashing out, and well, guns out, blaring from the side of um, John Howard from the smoking garage and well Luke JM just vibing over towards the side <laughs> of defender spawn and uh, attacker spawn yeah, I, I think Luke Jam as well, being as dynamic as they've been, is a really, really good sign uh, for John Howard for this tournament, but obviously also for this map. Um, mm. I think that's a really important thing as well on the attack, is to have a jet who can create space effectively for you, because sometimes it can be a bit difficult on this map if you've got people who are prepped like Calm is right now. But the shots could come, and, and when Luke Jam is... Sorry, uh, yeah, Luke Jam is feeling themselves... It's all good, and that will be a great way for them to crack open sites like this A site, which they don't even commit towards. I was surprised. I thought with the Yoru teleport going on in there, that was a big opening, but with Trix going down, now maybe they rethink their plans, shift over towards that C site, but oh, Soldier slips away for just a second and does not see the cross now. And that means they're going to be able to get control of the site, but they lose another player in recompense for it. John Howard right now a little bit down, but at least they've got control as they try and step on in that Molly's in such a great place. They buy the time, DM go get some great taps, but it's only bought them that time. It's only given them a little bit of space. They still need to find those frags. Yeah, and look at this. We have a swarm of Cognizant players coming in from CT. Peggy already gain, being able to isolate one of them. Soldier getting that trade. The Harbor Orb now going up. As you know, you can't actually shoot this or through this orb until you break the outer shell, but it doesn't matter if you can just shoot the players. Soldier cleaning up that round. And look at that. Cognizant take the second pistol. Yeah, I really like that uh, from Cognizant. I mean, it looked a little bit shaky, at least initially here, but the frags that Calm got were so, so big. Yeah. Um, and the fact that John Howard couldn't push forward, I honestly think committing towards the A site could have been really good for them. They could have gotten a lot of momentum, could have gotten a lot of ways to go on in. And the fact that Trix dies in that mid as well, when they wanted to have that space, that really stings because it meant that that rotate could come that much quicker, that people could be in the right mm. place at the right time. And Cognizant leveraged that well. It's something that we look towards for Haven a lot. Like I said, I want to see the mid space being taken, pressure on either side, getting these rotates, well, really putting a hole in their defense, which, like we said, Cam has done that. He's been been able to take that kill off the board, which means Seaside is realistically open. Well, yep. open for the taking, in which they did, and there we go. But Walty, oh, the wide swing from Peggy and the Killjoy down on long, really puts a crux in that plan of theirs. Yeah, it really does. It stops them in their tracks. DM God pushes forward aggressively. Soldier tries to spray, but doesn't have a lot of sight lines, so it makes it a little difficult, especially with DM God rounding the corner, delivering with it. And I love the fact that they're playing so well around double controller here and utilizing that. Cognizant, I mean, they unfortunately don't manage to use their weapons very effectively because there's just too little space to work with. And these pistols really can reign supreme. Triux in a fantastic spot to really deal with someone. With the shot, finally gets it, and will even go for a Lovely double dip. Shots. Yeah. 
and they've just been thrifted. So, well, we'll be going back into, well, if they've ran for the side of Cognizant here, and, well, John Howard should be able to buy up to full rifles, whether they want to save the Spectre over from the side of Triox. He's not really going to be getting into too many altercations, yeah. especially on this Killjoy, probably playing a lot more reserved, being able to save up those funds possibly for, well, it's saving up the bank for a rainy day, let's put say. But Cognizant, back on a full eco. Yeah, they are. I mean, <laughs> it's not exactly where you wanted to be. Obviously, losing that uh, that force round kind of stings uh, when you invested into Spectres on pretty much everyone. They've yeah. got nothing to work with, nothing to really kind of make that advantage happen. And I think John Howard are going to start to get a little bit of momentum and maybe show us what attack on this map can look like. And I would say they have quite an attacking comp just based on the yeah. fact that they have that kill joy. Yeah, you can hold down the legs, but you have a double duelist. And a sky that really does call for like quite a lot of sight XX and really relying on your killjoy or possibly brimstone to be that look character. But there we go, the first kill of the round going into the side of John Howard. The rifles are going to be so great in this situation against pistols, against well classics really, and Luke JM really stepping up for his team here again. Those eco frags that everyone loves to do, and plant is down now and is really. <laughs> It's not looking good for the side of Cognizant, especially in this week. If we can get maybe one or two picks, or even some damage on some of these players, make them force them to rebuy these shields. Yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't even look like that's happening. No. I, I, I think John Howard kind of, um, you were highlighting before the composition and how attacking it was, yeah. double flash is making a real difference because it means they can take those fights. It means they can get aggressive. It means you can also set up players like LuGM to just go forward and frag. And uh, it's really big in the way they were taking space on defense and now on offense, they're using it well. For example, in that take there where they just put the flash down and look, LuGM literally kind of just sat there and went, okay, you're not even shooting. I'm just going to spray you. Yeah. And... Like we said, they haven't got the reveal initiator. They haven't got any saver or fade, which it makes them really do rely on these flashes to make sure they are in those correct positions. And it is nice to see that the duelist of Luke JM, along with the well, half and half Yaru. I wouldn't say he's too much of a duelist, but he, he's I'd say he's kind of like a mix between an initiator and a duelist, especially with his uh, util kit. But either way, the double flashes, you have brimstone mollies, um, killjoy mollies. So it really is quite util heavy for the side of John Howard, which I feel like he was a bit lackluster from the side of Cognizant, especially when you're running. Uh, um, an omen and a harbor. Yeah. And you're using chamber chamber as your sentinel. Yeah. It's they, a bit they don't have a lot of ways to shut people no. down from really moving in. If they had this killjoy, I think they look so much more comfortable here. But yeah. they just can't really deny anything. And those flashes just kind of make sure that those uh, smokes are going to do so so little. Uh, if if the game goes long, John Howard would normally be at a disadvantage, right? They use yeah. their utility. I mean, obviously Brimstone's key thing is he's got great smokes, but don't lead to much. This shot <laughs> from Multi is really good, but. They just can't really force them to get towards that because they just commit towards it. And John Howard, they do not stop. Luke JM, again with the backstab onto a player there. And Cognizant, they look scattered. They look lost. And, well, John Howard are very happy to capitalize on that one. Yeah, and we were talking about the push and pull with space that you're giving and taking on the map. It doesn't seem like we've seen any much of that in this rifle round. I know it's the first rifle round we've seen in the half, but it's really leaving a lot to our imagination and what really we can expect from them in the future because... It's not looking confident. It doesn't really seem like that Cognizant have that sort of bite to their bark at the moment, especially when we're going into these next few rounds. Pate isn't really having a great game. And looking at the comp, you'd expect him to be sort of on that duelist replacement role because you have double sensor, you have double smokes, and you haven't got that entry. And yes, they were on um, attack first, which could be a bit of a telltale sign of why it was going so well poorly at the start, but when we're on defense, you're expecting this team to flourish. You have that double um, um, smoker, so double the map control. Theoretically, you should be able to take in regards to slowing down, especially yeah. with the harbor wall. And then you have chamber as your sentinel, being, should be shooting, being able to lock down maybe um, C and garage with the trips and TPs. But it doesn't seem we're getting that much util usage out of the chamber. No. Similar to what we had before the patch. You're absolutely right, and I think it's really brutal because they mm. rely on it so much here. You're gonna be able to invest those uh, the sky ultimate there. The seekers do manage to find a little bit, but they trade one for one. It's not all bad for cognizant, so I say until they drop another. And yeah, I mean this is like chess, but not in terms of the refined chess. All I'm thinking about is takes, takes, takes yeah. from John Howard right now. They take control of this map, they take control of the site, and it just feels like cognizant cannot keep up with the pace. Not normally something I would say for John Howard, but they are playing so well around 
around what they've got available to them. Yeah, and it is, they're pairing well with this, well, non-orthodox comp, which, yeah. especially when you bring in a brimstone to a map like Haven, you're really kind of giving up so much, if you, especially if you're using your three smokes, that's yeah. all you have towards the start of the round to take the space, which, again, is what we're seeing. They didn't even use the smoke stuff, and they literally just went in with this double flash, which, again, is like your initiation for this team. You have the um, Yoru and the Sky playing as the initiator for Luke JM, along with B-Magic as well, being able to put that stim beacon down, put the smokes, clear off the angles, and... I didn't have much hope for their comp, but it is really surprising me how well they're playing it against uh, Cognizant. Yeah, they're going to push forward again, and it's more, I don't need to know where you are, I just need to know you can't see me, and setting up for that there, obviously, Yoru fake going on through. They almost shot it, but instead <laughs> it's going to be Peggy lurking around as the push goes towards another angle. Cognizant again using the map, sorry, um, John Howard again using the map effectively, yeah. rotating on through, and they are ready to make that push happen. Patty tries really to like find something smoke. that only gets one. The smoke was good, but it's Zeref who really delivers here. Big from the Omen, and that's what Cognizant need. They need some players to step up, and so far it's mm. been these controllers. I really like that smoke from the Omen there. Of course it's going to be smoking off C long, but normally you'd put a little bit deeper but because of that it was so well overlapping onto site was able to play around it especially getting those well picks onto the players funneling out of garage and trying to pressure his teammate in logs as you, as you can see he died towards back site and they were too preoccupied to worry about what could be behind this quite fat smoke and well it is the doom of the round behind that smoke I say that almost, almost having to take my words back there, but Walter closing it out. Peggy picking up two for himself in that 4v2, uh, 1v4 situation, which is quite good in the side of looking about the economy, looking about how well you're building up, how well you're well breaking down the side of Cognizant, and it's looking a bit dire towards some of the funding on the side of um, the defenders. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate for Cognizant. They've been able to kind of go back in, win some of these rounds, perform well. Uh, but unfortunately, it's kind of been, even though they've been performing well, it feels like John, Stahow sorry, John Howard are just that one step ahead. Um, and now with the economy as well, it's going to be continually problematic. They lose a round, and it's pretty much going to be match point almost instantaneously. Yeah. I, when John Howard have an advantage in terms of guns, again, I mean, they can get upset. We've seen it happen, but it's very unlikely. They are a solid team, and they play well to their strengths. Good usage of the sky here to kind of check that C long. And John Howard haven't really claimed a lot early on here. Instead, they're kind of playing a little bit slower, and that could bode well. Yeah, and it's definitely what I like to see towards a map like Haven. You are going up against, well, equal buys here, and it's, like you said, it's a pivotal round for both teams, whether they're going to be able to get back into the game from the side of Cognizant, we'll make up that round differential with the Who's rifle next? buy and then the eco. Hopefully they would win that, which we're expecting them to, but the ultimate here invested. I don't think Peggy's seen him in the corner. I don't think they have Peggy. Oh, does see it on the flip back there. Knows that the players have been forced out. Now we'll get back on in. They were too preoccupied with the clone. But Zeref sees true, takes it down Peggy. But that smoke is so big. You see the lockdown coming on through. The Hunter's Fury coming out here trying to deny. Trades back and forth. And with Cum going down, there's a lot of the firepower right now on Cognizant off the board. B Magic will get that plant. That Hunter's Fury leads to very little, unfortunately. And John Howard, they have the control. But with players going down, this could be an opportunity. They want to get those flashes but they're investing a lot of utility to no avail dm god swings wide but loses the jewel and it's two low health players now to finish things off where will walty approach from well look at this there's a vandal in hand so it's a double shot to the body for the side of john howard player but he's not even going to check the corner because oh. the mollies have been popped he's not going to expect a player with the mollies with that post plan util to just be sat in graffiti it's a bit weird but but Come that's on, the point. Do that's your due the diligence. Point. Due diligence is no point when the time bomb is taken down. You're going to have to True. get those mollies off the bomb. Seven, I think it's 7.3 seconds. They last for roughly yep. that, but he has two mollies on that bomb. So you have to really take as much space in the time that you can. And, well, Triox knew that and took advantage of his positioning and, well, slithered into the corner and shot him in the back. Yeah, I think this again allows us to highlight the difference in the compositions, and I think again a big point is that Killjoy we were highlighting again and again oh, and I again. I love a Killjoy on Haven, especially after the changes. It is so nice to see it again, especially since we were in the chamber meta, then we were going into a bit more yeah. Scythe after chamber was gone, but then Killjoy's back, she's back and thriving on maps like this, oh, yeah. and especially like Lotus, as we've seen a lot of teams in Lock-In play it yep. on the map, 
looking towards more of a double sentinel towards that as well. It's quite interesting to see, and I can't wait to see more in the Omega bracket this week. Yeah, I've been looking forward to yeah. it. I've been enjoying watching a lot of the teams. I got to commentate some uh, Southeast Asia about probably about a year and a half ago yeah. now. So it's great to see some of those teams coming through in Team Secret. Uh, who were Oh my think, gosh, yeah. two O Liquid. That yeah. was such an upset as well. And it, it wasn't even the fact that Liquid were playing bad. No, Secret just came out of nowhere, really. The underdogs in that series, which, well, the underdog in this series, I can't even tell. I think John Howard and Cognizant are quite equal to yeah. what we were expecting them. Similar place on the seed. But the shot then onto that clone is going to make Luke JM weary of the judge in Burpate. There we go. He's up and online, back on the server with the operator in hand. Let's see what else he can get through with this round. I am worried that that operator in hand, great, it's important, but is it too little too late? That's the yeah. real problem here. With two rounds left on the board, Cogson do not have a lot to play with. Walty manages to track down some of these players, so John Howard might be struggling a little bit here with B-Magic going okay. down. You know, I thought they were going to have a problem with getting onto this site, but with Peggy falling, it's almost a foregone conclusion. There is just one, and I think Trix is looking at this one and going, uh, I don't think I'm going to get any... I don't think I'm going to get any cheeky plays off this time, unfortunately. Has access to those nano swarms, but I think very sensibly not really investing it, looking mm. to do some damage where they can. And the bomb is down as well, and the information from Zaref up in heaven is going to be pinging that out. And both teams. Oh, no, but look at that. Truth is going to get that kill onto Passe. The operators should be recycled then, but yeah, very nicely played. A very nice shot, but like we said, Cognitive. Um, Cognizant, so looking so good when they get that first pick. It really does put like a croak in John Howard's plan. From the seams of it, it, they fall apart if they lose the first one or two players, unless you have, well, a massive step at round from the players like um, Peggy and DM God that we've seen in the past, mm -hmm. similar to what we're expecting from Soldier and Cam at this point. We're just, yeah. They're pulling like three, four Ks like out of their pocket, like they haven't seen it before. Yeah. I it, it, it's just been these individual plays kind of keeping Cognizant in, and that is not a place you ever no. want to really be. Um, especially, again, against a team like John Howard, who are the kind of gatekeepers, are the team to beat to try and solidify yourself as a top-level team here. Peggy moves on forward, does not check the corner, oh my and gosh. wow, oh wow. Funny Lovely that. shot, one top. It was a one tap. It was a one tap on Topagi there. Lovely shot into the cubby, <laughs> making sure to utilize that. But look at the position, and he's going to get crunched by all four remaining players here. He needs to take a peek, but turning in his back to Truex there, giving the site fully now. We know C Long is clear. We know, well, we have all that space, but they've kind of like left sight a little yeah. bit. Especially since they're walled off, this is not exactly where they're going to be. That shot, though, should give them the information they know. They know they might have to step up soon. Mm. DM God backs up, has a little bit of help from Luke there. Should be able to Last step forward, but gets game. denied. However, it's just one left alive. Moves to match point. John Howard using the angles well. And even though they were a little off sight, even though it looked yep. like it could have been a problem with the harbor walls, they were in it just the nick of time. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Like, when you're talking about when you have a harbor on the side of your team, you have that orb that, well, blocks all sort of gunshots but then the util and the lineups coming in from it well the lineup larry's of the side <laughs> over john howard from b magic and Trix there we had the brimstone molly on the bomb that's great yeah the, the thing with the harbor util is utility can still pass through that wall it's yeah. not going to block any nano swarms coming down from the sky any shock darts coming your way it's only going to stop the cold hard steel of the bullets which it's not really what john howard were relying on in that round Nope, they, and they don't need to. Their comp is, as you say, well set up for those post plants with the yep. nanoswarms, with the Molotovs, obviously with the orbital, or, 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 orbital, orbital strike. Bomb, <laughs> orbital strike. I was going to say orbital bombardment, but I was struggling with that one a little bit, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I mean, they just have so many tools to yep. work with. And now with four ultimates available, I mean, they've got one advantage over Cognizant, but I think when you're on the attack, when you're on that post plant, those ultimates are so darn valuable, especially with the lockdown, especially with the orbital strike, like we were saying. So keep an eye on this one. Luke Jam stepping up forward getting a lot of space to their team again this is what i want to see and there's no backstab no nothing coming they were just given that site complete control i i don't know what to expect here the thing is the ultimates remaining for cognizant are not amazing for those retakes they're going to be able to buy so much time the seekers even go in this is looking like a lockout 
Yeah, and the Harbour Ultimate now being invested uh, along with the Seekers. It's going to shift some players out of their positioning, but we still, like we said, we have these Brimstone Mollies lineups. We have the Nano Swarms. We have the Gunpower of Peggy, but it's still now down to a 3v4. Orbital Strike, like we said, is still in hand along with the Molly. It's not really anything that you have to worry about for the side of John Howard until you get Jera pushing down into long. There you go, Triox getting a kill with the Nano Swarm, getting a kill with the gun with a rifle for him himself b magic has walked his way through b site and that is a 39 a defeat for cognizant and john howard really solidify why they come into every land and why they deserve to be here yeah you were highlighting the util play from the very start from the intro that we had and that's what we love to see from john howard and they rely on it at the end there they lost like most of those gunfights on site, they had an yeah. advantage and they squandered it, but they didn't care. They didn't matter to them. They had access to those monolays, they had access to those nanoswarm and the orbital strike to finish things off. It was so darn good for them as they locked things out. Yeah, and you just have um, B-Magic walking through B site and come in like CT. Yeah. Like running into the back of one of the players, just taking a little bit of a breather from the retake as well. They were just in the little bit of a link then between A, um, a and B and was met with the gun of be magic yeah a really nice couple of plays and i, I really want to highlight that peggy was able to really deliver mm. on this euro it's always a pick Definitely. which i'm a little bit suspect of uh but getting those five first bloods managing to get some really tricky plays going that, that's mm. what i'm here for absolutely and again working alongside in tandem with luke dm the other duelist and dm god as well and well they've really accentuated how well they can play together we already knew it was going to be like that we already knew they were a good team in regards to the core and regards to the fundamentals and it's really nice to see how a bit of a boogie comp can well really prove fruitful for them well we've got disco moves coming for back for you later uh, with the next match going on right now we're getting ready for that lunch break for the players for everything so we will go to a slightly longer break this time as we get prepped for round four well i was going to say don't go anywhere but go get yourself a snack go get yourself something to eat and come back in an hour and a bit